They seem basic enough when you lace them up, but my running shoes are really size 12 feet of engineering. They've got to be strong enough to absorb the impact of running, yet comfortable enough to give the foot flexibility and speed. Well, we're in Lawrence, Massachusetts at the research and development part of New Balance Shoes. How are you? <laughs> Here we're going to get really inside the shoe, get into the science. We want to find out. How do you build a running shoe that cushions and stabilizes your foot? With every stride, feet, ankles, knees, hips, and torso must absorb an enormous shock. New Balance has designed running shoes that can handle all of that, and it started with founder William Riley, who created a three-pronged approach to the insole. What inspired him, Sean? Well, why don't we bring in our visual aid, and um, I, can, well, I, I can... Visual aid? Oh my goodness. Yeah, he took, he took it, inspiration I, from the chicken. It's a shoe factory and a chicken farm. <laughs> yeah. who, who knew? Chickens have incredible stability despite the amount, their mass of, that it's above their foot. And basically he took inspiration from the fact that that four-pronged foot, similar to a triangular pyramidal shape, mm -hmm. provided a great deal of stability to the chicken. You know, we are theoretically less stable than chickens. That's right. You know this chicken has an agent? Well, the New Balance sole has come a long way, and so has the R&D. Today, it's all about figuring out which part of the foot absorbs the most impact. Okay, Brian, let's, um, let's get started. Let's get this into your shoe. Okay. Is, is this going to hurt? No, no. Sean's going to analyze the dynamics of my foot using a digital insole. I have a feeling that this is going to be hooked up to a computer. 960 sensors on this insole send signals to a computer, which then pools all of that data. Um, what exactly are we trying to measure here? We're trying to measure the pressure that is basically being distributed from your foot contacting the ground. You're hitting on the outside of your heels and sweeping across and leaving on the ball of your foot. And because you're in the air a lot of the time, you're not putting any pressure on your feet. And then when you do land, you put tremendous pressure on your feet. So your weight, in fact, is surging up and down. Right. Well, what I'm clearly seeing right now, you're, a, you're clearly a heel forefoot striker. I'm not alone. Most runners push off from their forefeet and land on their heels. That's why New Balance designs many of its soles with extra cushioning in these areas. But cushioning must be balanced with another important function of the sole, stability. If you put too much cushioning in, he won't be able to keep his foot from rolling over, right? He'll pronate. Exactly. It's a balancing act. If there's too much cushioning, too much deformation, if the material's actually deforming too much, your foot's going to start to become very wobbly. I think we should move this forward because um, I'm starting to sweat a little. <laughs> and uh, starting to smell. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky to find the right mix between cushioning and stability. And that's where computer-aided design, or CAD, comes in. Matt Dunbar is a senior CAD designer here at New Balance. Matt, how are you, sir? Hi, Brian. In that design, you were getting feedback from some runners who are testing it or from somewhere else in R&D here. How would you change it here? Let's say the feedback from the wear testers was that maybe this, these holes are too big and I would come into the model here and I could access these hole features and actually change the diameter of those holes. Let's make them smaller. So once you've made a change like this, how do you realize it? You take them over to the 3D printer. 3D. Come on, this is exciting, you guys. All right. There's no paper in this printer. Instead, there's powder. As the sole gets scanned onto the powder, a binding agent acts like ink and hardens the powder into the thin layers of the sole. We are raising the build right now. And so in there is the 3D representation of what we designed on the computer. But how is that hard in the surrounding surface all like, you know? It's a plaster material and okay. it, it just puts, it lays down a binder. So it's like putting water in kitty litter and it just hardens in thin layers. Once the sole hardens, we'll dust off the excess powder. It's like a blizzard in there. It's like Studio 54 in 1982. And a sole is born. 
This prototype will be used to make thousands more. That's pretty cool. So we've given our shoe a soul, and clearly our job is only half done. It's time to connect with the oh-so-critical upper. The upper is highly designed. It's painstakingly engineered and almost entirely assembled by hand. We're in the cutting room in Skowhegan, Maine. This is just one of five plants they have for making New Balance running shoes, right? Yes. Five. At this one manufacturing plant, New Balance will crank out more than 300,000 pairs of shoes in a year. And it all starts with a big piece of pigskin, which will be cut up and sewn together to build the upper. So we're basically making this piece here and this piece here. They have to make thousands of these pieces every day, and this one, called the Iro, is just one of 29 individual parts that forms a single upper. And this is just a big, what would you call this thing exactly? Uh, high-tech cookie cutter. High-tech cookie cutter. I like that. That's what it is. Very technical. It is. High-tech cookie cutter. <laughs> All right. Clear. There you go. We're on our way to making an upper. When the cutting is done, it's time to put the puzzle pieces together. So Angel is assembling the upper. How many pieces are you putting down on one of these templates here, Angel? Six pieces. Six pieces. Basically, you just lower that lid down and the needle just attacks and you really don't have to do any other sewing. But there's one part of the sewing process that requires some very special attention. This is the end department over here, and uh, on my left are the ends on the left, and on my right, the ends for the right. They're gonna be eventually put in like so. Shelly Guido. Guido. Shelly Guido. Shelly just married a Frenchman. The key here is not to sew over the end part. No hands, Shelly. What do you think of that one? No. No, let's take this off. You hit it twice. Keep it going. Hit it again. Seriously? <laughs> there is a tiny, That'd tiny thread over the reflective there. Now that would come back to Shelly here today and probably result in some very stern discipline. Shelly's obviously a lot faster at this than I am. And voila. Yay. This upper still looks more like a kitty placemat than the top of a shoe. So we're going to have to give it some more shape. For that, we need, you guessed it, more sewing. On this floor at New Balance, this is like the sewing room from hell. Uh, Angel graciously attempted to show me a few things, and I've actually said I can't do it. It's so hard what you do. You're moving these things across this needle so fast. This part, at least, is done by hand. Right. Now, the other angel downstairs, because we have two angels, is doing it in an automated process with a computer. Yeah. What's the difference here? No machine can put these together like we did. Faster, 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 faster. <laughs> Do you want to try one? You can try one. All right, I I'll try one. You. I'll try it. But what if I okay. screw it up? I can fix it. You got to match the notches up. Match up the notches. And lift this up. Lift this up. And stitch along the bottom. Stick them on the bottom. Here we go, folks. Oh, yes! <laughs> now, if you get this pair of running shoes, <laughs> I'm very sorry. This. <laughs> That is called some more assembly required. <laughs> Uppers that have been sewn properly are almost ready to marry with their soles. But before the two parts merge together, the upper goes through a rigorous fitting process. We have sewn the snot out of these things. We've got stitching on the bottom, we got the tongues in, we got the backs on. And now we're going to steam them like dinner rolls because that makes them more pliable yes. and uh, easier to work with yes. and loosens up some of the glues in here. Jai is the man who runs this whole place here. Can I just grab that one out of here? Oh, yeah, nice and toasty. Right now, this feels like a shoe that's been worn by a really sweaty person for, like, 10 days. Now, from here we go to the toe laster, and that's where the toe of a New Balance sneaker really takes shape. A toe laster applies glue to the underside of the shoe and then pulls the leather down over the toe, giving it a smooth, tight fit. Now, that was all done with pressure and glue. Right. 
any excess pigskin is sanded away. And finally, it's time to attach the sole to the upper. We have the sole of our shoe, and this is what we designed at Research and Development in Lawrence, Massachusetts. And uh, these are manufactured in China. They're shipped up here, and this is where these soles meet their uppers. Like so. That glow that you're seeing is an incandescent radiant heat system activating hot spray glue. That glue was applied about 40 minutes ago on the other side of the factory to the sole of the shoe. Once the glue's activated, they'll press the upper into the sole and then pop it in this machine over here, which does what human hands can't. Tremendous uniform pressure will bind the shoes together forever. Before any shoes are shipped, there's one last step. A final check from the inspector. Well, have you ever wanted to know who was the last person to touch a New Balance running shoe before they went on your feet? Wanda. Wanda the lacer. Yeah. Yeah. What are you looking for? I uh, check the sizes and make sure they're printed normally. Legible. I make sure all the stitching is done well. Look good. They look great. But the real test for these New Balance running shoes is not in a factory, it's on the track. You ready, Brian? Blue. It's a good day to run. I hope I don't have the ones you made. I hope I don't have the ones you made. Let's race. I'll race you, Professor.